Hey everyone, my name is Anastasia and I'm a first year law student here at Queen Mary University of London. Today I'll be showing you my room where I've been living for the past year and then in the second part of the video I'll kind of explain the process and everything around it. Let's come in. <laughs> Alright, so as soon as we enter the room, we've got shelves all around. Now, they don't look big, however, I managed to fit in nearly three suitcases of clothes, so either my technique or they're big enough. We've got sweaters here, um, long sleeves that I don't use anymore, t-shirts, jeans for every day, crop tops, going out stuff, and then peaches and the rest under it. Great storage, honestly, for a student room. Then we've got the cupboard. Got all my clothes that I don't really use anymore, but they're useful from October to April-ish. Um, all my depot stuff that I will link down below that I put upstairs. And we've got a really nice mirror, honestly, super happy about it. It's great when you're figuring out your outfits. Still with the clothes, I put all my gym stuff here. We've got kind of two big shelves here. Gym stuff and then books and my folders. Then I have three drawers here that I use for socks and stuff like that but I have a lot of friends that use it just for chargers, things that they use daily on their desk. Talking about the desk, we're really lucky because most ACOMs have really long desks so if you use it daily to study on, and I mean honestly it's amazing. It is a quarter of your room so it takes quite a bit of space, it's worth it. This is where I put my computer, this is where I should be studying, but I usually study in my bed. And this is also where I put most of my beauty stuff. So I just have this tray, cute one. And then I just bought these plastic boxes. I'll link many, many things down below that I bought on Amazon. Student essentials that you need to have when you move in. On the top, I've got these three boxes. Super big, super flexible, and you can kind of fold them when you move out. So amazing for me in a month. Here I've put my medicine. Yes, an entire box of it. I have like bags and like paper plastic things. And then I've got my sheets in there. So honestly, overall, this room is amazing storage wise because as long as you've got boxes and stuff, you can really put them anywhere. Again, storage under the desk. It's where I put my gym mattress and a suitcase. Little decoration for my grandma, so far. Most of my vitamins, more medicine, and then just books that I need to read that I still haven't read, but hopefully this summer. Chargers, again, in a little box here. The good thing is about my room is that I've got two windows, so I'm really excited about that. One of which broke, as you may have seen in my last video. This is Puli House in front of us. We also have a heater that I don't really use anymore, but I had no idea how to use it. Um, but it's quite nice. It's like, you just gotta know that you've got this monitor here and it can work from for 15 minutes to two hours. So it's not great when you're freezing to death after two hours, but at least you've got one. Then we've got plugs all around, it's beautiful. Coming to my second window, I am lucky enough to have a second one because I'm in the corner. So i um, quite happy about that. I am in a standard and suite, so I have a single bed only, but it's comfortable enough. I've got people that put like extra mattresses on it, like thin ones. I didn't do that just for the only reason that I just didn't have space. I already had five suitcases and it was enough. It is quite okay comfort wise. Um, I'm a bit weak, but it's a lot of storage down there, so I put like most of my suitcases and like big blankets that I don't use anymore under my bed. Then I've got a shoe rack. Amazing, you need one. First month, I tried to put my shoes a bit everywhere. It just didn't look good and it was taking up most of my space. So if you've got a few pairs of shoes, then I'd advise just buy a shoe rack. That one was really cheap, honestly. In this corner, I've got this light that I still haven't used yet. I should probably start to use it. And I've also got towels here because the bathroom is behind this door. I bought this because I just had nowhere to have my towels. This is where I put all my bags, and then I've got a laundry bag. Um, you're kind of going to need it if you don't live at a friend's house because you'll have to carry your stuff there. So, Bathroom time. I'm lucky enough to have my own bathroom, so I'm not going to complain too much. But um, yeah, just see it for yourself. Here is where I put my kind of cleaning supplies. Not the cutest, but it is what it is. Then the water goes a bit everywhere, but uh, I mean, it's a student shower. It does the job. 
The only thing I did, quite stupid, was that I decided when I saw the kind of pictures of my room that I wanted a gray theme in my bathroom. So I bought these. They're cute, but um, they're way too short. I didn't really know that you needed the length um, to kind of touch the floor for the water not to come out, but it is what it is. So yeah, overall, I mean, you've got toilet, you've got bathrooms. Some people have to share it with other people, but if you've got an ensuite, then this is what you'll probably get. Let's head to the corridor and let's head to the kitchen because this is where you'll see your flatmates most of the time. So this is the corridor. This is where I have two other three rooms with my flatmates. This is a private flat, so no one has the key to it. Um, unless, I mean, it's us. This is the kitchen. We've got like this kind of mini room in the kitchen where we kind of just store the cleaning supplies. Usually the cleaning lady just dumps things there. We've got a huge window, so it's amazing when you just need some light. I need studying. I study a lot here actually. And then we've got this. It was like the residential's live community giving us a little thing to write on. It ended up being something that we give to people that come to our flat to write a little message. The way the kitchen is organized is that we have our own covers and drawers depending on our room. So I'm D, so I get this, a drawer, here to put my plates in, and I get like a part of the fridge. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so coming into the second part of this video, I'm just gonna give you information about my experience with getting this room. I'm honestly very happy about it. It's been a blast to live here. The way it worked is that I got my conditional offer and then the residential team of Queen Mary sent me an email asking me to rank the five top ACOMs that I was interested in. It's not that you'll have to rank the types of accommodations that you want. So either way, they'll give you five types from premium and suite, standard and suite, and suite economy, single standard within campus, and single standard outside. So I did it in this order. It happened to be from the most expensive to the cheapest, but again, there's not a big difference. It's really going to depend on the budget or the facilities that you count on. Um, I did this end of April, which was honestly a tiny bit late because I got my second choice and it is on a first come first serve basis. So I'd advise to definitely do it the fastest you can. The main differences are the utilities. For example, in premium and suite, which is only Fran's house, you get a bath and a queen bed and you have the laundry room and and everything within the building for example for the standard and suite you have a shower still your own but as you've seen like it's not a bath and you get a single bed I think the cheapest one is like a tiny bit outside of campus still on the same road you get a single bed but then you have to share your shower when you get your offer for the Queen Mary accommodation you need to pay a 300 pound deposit now I'm not sure exactly what happens with it once you finish the year but I've just received an email saying that they check my room and then send it back um, if nothing really happened, I'm not sure what the criteria is, but just know that it's not lost money You just have to pay that to get your official offer. You will get your offer in July um, I guess end of June minimum. Um, I applied still quite early and I only got it during summer But just know that as long as you've applied before the deadline there will be room for you now, when I was watching these videos, I honestly just thought that that was kind of my only option if I wanted to live within campus. What I didn't know is that there is a private accommodation that is not directly affiliated with Queen Mary, but that's still inside or just around campus. And that is called SCAPE. So it's a private student accommodation. You don't really have to be at Queen Mary to live in there, but usually it's just us. It is a more expensive um, accommodation but a lot more modern and it's got a bit more facilities within the buildings you've got a movie room you've got a gym etc so honestly it really depends on your budget what you want and what your priorities are I wanted to be surrounded by students I didn't really know that was the option I still ended up being really happy having said that again make sure that you do apply as fast as possible there's still some people that um, I know that tried to apply and it was after the deadline and either got the rooms that they really didn't want like their fifth choice 
or didn't get rooms at all and then it gets a lot more complex if you did not plan on commuting in the first place so overall if you want to know more about my experience about accommodation i'd advise you to watch my last video and if not well i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it helped you if you're moving into queen mary next year i hope you have a blast like i did see you next time Thank you.